We're at the INSEAD Global Business Leaders Conference in Paris, focusing on European competitiveness, and we're talking with Rajesh Krishnamurti, who is Vice President of Infosys. Welcome to INSEAD Knowledge. You're based here in Paris, and you're running an international business with international clients. What are some of the issues here in Europe, some of the competitiveness issues? I actually think that there are multiple Europes within Europe, probably four different ones. Uh, I would say purely from a competitiveness, maturity of industrialization, etc. I would say there are broadly four categories. I would classify maybe the Nordic countries as uh, maybe Nordic countries and Switzerland as one group. Uh, Western Europe is another. Uh, and maybe South and East Europe as another block. And then Southeast Europe uh, is, is the tail. And I think they're probably in the descending order of competitiveness. Uh, so clearly, I think. Uh, the, the countries which have been uh, much more uh, global in their approach have been much more um, adoptive of global best practices, levering, leveraging global talent, uh, leveraging global sourcing have been far more competitive and they've kind of raised the bar for Europe and, uh, and clearly there are some laggards. So I think that's, that's how I would try and look at Europe as, as a whole. You're in charge of strategy and a big chunk of the business, something like 750 million euros. I mean, what's it like operating that kind of a business here in France? I think, uh, you know, uh, 750 million dollars looks like a big number, but it also can be a very small number depending on how you compete and the space you're competing in. And uh, uh, being in France, I think, uh, is actually a blessing in disguise because uh, it, it gives me a, a very central location. I cover uh, so I have clients uh, right from Australia all the way to Seattle. Uh, so it gives me good perspective, good time zone coverage. It's a quick one flight hop to India where I travel very often. Uh, one hop to the US uh, where I have uh, half of my business is in the US. Uh, so I do travel extensively. So being based out of Europe, uh, one of the uh, 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 good, uh, good airport connection hubs. I think Paris is, uh, a lot of people don't like Paris as a, as a transportation hub, but I find it quite convenient. A quick one flight to, to most of my destinations. So uh, yeah, it's a, good, it's a great location to be in. I love the, the French culture, I uh, love the French food. So it's a, it's a great choice from, uh, from a personal perspective. At Infosys, what are some of the things that you're working on to stay competitive? A few things which we, we want to do, which we probably, uh, uh, in some ways, probably uh, you know, uh, lifted our eyes off that, of those particular in those areas is, uh, our bread and butter business has largely been the outsourcing business. And, and I think over the last uh, uh, maybe you know, five to 10 years, uh, that is probably an area where uh, we have not invested as much in creating the innovations, et cetera, or maybe not focused so much on and, and made a mark on it. And I think that's, that's a critical area. The second is, I think there are, there, are, there are new markets which we should have entered into, which we should have probably made more investments up front. Uh, clearly, uh, Europe was one where I think we had lagged in terms of making investments. We made a very significant investment last year. We, we acquired a management consulting company and spent upward of $300 million to acquire that to create this as a beachhead for us to grow in Europe. There are certain other markets like Latin America where we have uh, made, made some small investments, but we not really get, got it to the scale where it can help us drive growth. So I think there are these uh, economies which are growing, and I think in some ways we've kind of not taken advantage of the growth in those economies. And I think that is probably an area where we will have to focus a bit more as we go forward. What kind of growth do you expect in your European business? Uh, today, uh, Europe represents roughly 25% of our revenues. As a, as a strategic uh, objective, uh, we've ha always said that we want to balance our growth. Our dependence on North America was always very high. Uh, today, it is 60% plus. So we're really looking at a balancing of 40, 40, 20, 40% 40 revenues from US, 40% from Europe, and 20% from, from, from Asia Pacific and the rest of the world. So that's typically been the, the kind of uh, guiding number which we are shooting for. And therefore, you're seeing these disproportionate investments which we're going to continue to make in, in Europe and in the rest of the world. 25% sounds high, or, or at least healthy. Um, well, 40 would be more healthy. <laughs> Let me ask you a broader question, kind of about the industry. 
The role of the Chief Information Officer or Chief Technology Officer has really expanded recently. And in fact, the knowledge of technology at the CEO level and in the C-suite has expanded considerably. Maybe it's because technology is part of our lives and CEOs tend to bring it with them when they, when they get their promotions. How do you see the role of the CIO or the CTO and technology in general impacting business going forward? No, I think you're absolutely right. I think. Uh in the, in the current world of the digital consumer um, and the Generation Y or Generation Z or whatever you want to refer to it because I think we've, gone around, we've run out of alphabets uh, on, that, uh, on that pretty soon, is that the current need of a consumer to consume anything, anytime, anywhere and to be able to do that seamlessly is a challenge which, uh, which every company has to face. So whether it is uh, uh, introducing a new product, expanding into a new market, uh, trying to get feedback about a product you've launched, the whole impact of social media and its, and its relevance in, in today's product strategy, product design, etc., is become so important that it is uh, almost impossible for any of these activities to be conducted without a significant uh, investment in information technology and communication. And I think therefore, um, it, is, it is not surprising that the, the CIO's role is becoming far more important, in some cases even more important than some of the business leaders because the underlying infrastructure, the technology infrastructure is required to be able to scale in the new markets with new products, etc., is fundamentally underpinned on a, on a technology platform. Uh, the, the role of the, the spend within digital marketing, the role of the chief marketing officer and how that in some ways is is almost you know overlapping with what the IT used to do in the past. So overall I think that whole space is, is morphing quite fast and uh, needless to say uh, in order to be able to capture the, the hearts and the minds and the wallets of the, of the emerging generation, uh, technology is, is, the, is, the, is, the, is, your, is your ticket to that world. Um, so I think it's only a matter of time that we're going to see these roles become far more important, far more prevalent. Uh, it, it's already the case in certain mature economies. I think you know clearly uh, the, U, the U.S. leads in this in this trend, uh, followed by the U.K. etc. I think continental Europe to some extent is is sometimes a laggard because there's a lot of legacy and incremental changes are always harder to make than a greenfield scenario. Uh, but I think it's only a matter of time that we will actually see this role become far more important and far more prevalent across the globe. Now you yourself have been with Infosys for 20 years. You're a young man, maybe you'll be there for 20 more years. How has the business changed looking back and what do you think it's going to be like going forward? Everything has changed. Uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, there is, uh, if, if I really look back over the last 20 years, um, of course as a company we've changed. Uh, you know, 150 people company. I remember working out of a kitchen of a house in Bangalore where I wrote my first program and I had ac access to the computer from 12 in the night till 6 in the morning because we were running these shifts and the youngest people could only get the graveyard shift. Uh, from that world uh, to the world today where uh, you know, we instantly connected to, to all, my, all my colleagues across the globe, uh, we can do video chat on demand. Uh, uh, it's a dramatically different world. Uh, so size has changed, the scale has changed, the kind of services you provide has changed. But more importantly, the world in which we are operating has also changed. And I think uh, uh, the last few years of economic downturn has made it even more stark because I think the need for innovation has never been so strong. I think uh, uh, only companies which are going to cons con you know, constantly invest in creating new services, uh, in creating new ideas and, and ability to take those new ideas into a into something concrete and take it to the market are really going to survive in the long run. And I think uh, that is the world we are living in today. And therefore, uh, I think w for me, what is really important is how do I, how do you create an environment where you can nourish this, this, uh, this whole creative minds? How do you make sure that the best ideas come to the table? How do you make sure that the, the infrastructure and the processes you have in order to be able to take those ideas to fruition is, uh, does not fall through the cracks? And I think leaders of today have to, have, have to actually nurture these, these ideas and take them to fruition. And I think that's the most important challenge. Well, that's a pretty tall order. Are you optimistic? Oh, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, I think if, you look at, if you look at how the world has changed and uh, you know, how, how much, uh, how much uh, progress we've made, both in terms of technology, in terms of social, in terms of 
uh, connectivity in terms of mobility of people, etc. I think uh, I think we've kind of scratched the surface. I think uh, there's a whole bunch of more exciting stuff to come. Uh, I think the next 20 years are probably going to be going to see as much change as the as the last 2,000 years, and uh, and I think uh, it's going to be interesting times. Rajesh Krishnamurti, thank you very much for being with us on NCAD Knowledge. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me.